joining us now from NBC Sports Boston. We sent up the signal for him, knowing that Tom Brady would be newsworthy, and sure enough, that actually happened. Tom Curran joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. There's a signal. Tom Curran joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show the day that Tom Brady says his farewells via Instagram to the New England Patriots. Tom, how's New England taking it so far? Uh, New England weeps. Rich, New England weeps. And I am not in a good spot sell-wise at the moment. I will be in a great spot in about 14 seconds. Okay. But such is the nature of the day. How does that sound? Better? Okay, fine. Let me tap dance for 10 seconds. Tom <laughs> Curran, uh clearly on a daily commute where he knows that there's a dead spot for a, uh, a phone call. And uh, we all know it. We all deal with it. We all got it. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. So when you say when you say New England weeps, what do you mean by that, Tom? I think that there has very much been a uh, reluctance and denial that whether it's me or Jeff Darlington or anyone reporting on this over the course of time. I mean, I wrote in December that unless there was a radical course change, wrote about two thousand words on it, that Tom Brady was going to be a free agent. And I got hooted pretty resoundingly by most Patriots fans as being doom and gloom and partaking in hot takes and just looking for clicks. And it's sadly, I mean, I've covered the team for a long time. I don't want Tom Brady to go anyplace. I grew up here. It's been fun. I don't want to see the Jared Stidham era. But I think so many people have tamped down the reality of the situation and believed or preferred to believe that everything between Tom and Bill has always been terrific, and every time they even stare at each other, it's supposed to be a rebuttal that there's even anything untoward between them in terms of a philosophical difference. It's not true. They have a deep philosophical divide on how to proceed. The atmosphere wasn't what Brady was enjoying. Bill has, over the course of time, Rich, despite the fact he sat in the room with him, I found that to me, I just used that in the story, actually. Sorry to babble here, but... Go for it. You know, as you, saw, as you saw Bill and Tom across the table from you, and I watched it on TV, it reminded me just of uh, how much Tom really covets the validation of Bill and how much, as he spoke about how Peyton Manning had so much control with the Indianapolis Colts and the Denver Broncos, and Brady said, yeah, I never had that. How much he felt as if his relationship with Bill was always going to be coach-employee. Even after 20 years, Bill was not going to deviate from that. And he was never going to get the bouquets verbally or otherwise thrown to him because enough other people were doing that in Bill's mind. That Tom didn't need it from Bill, too. But maybe he did. For, for Of all the anecdotes, Rich, for Tom Brady to seize upon the one from the day after Super Bowl 36 when Belichick turns to him and says... You had a pretty good season. Yes, it's funny, and yes, it is indicative of who Bill is, but the fact that Tom holds on to that, keeps it in his pocket, and rolls it around in the palm of his hand, remembering it, hmm. says something as well. So when it all came down to it, after 20 years, Tom doesn't want to be with Bill anymore, essentially, is what you're saying is how this all played out over the last two weeks, two months, two years. I mean, uh, timeline all this for me is we're again showing on our YouTube.com, Rich slash Rich Eisen show feed, a, you know, the f very flowery for, certainly for him, statement from Bill Belichick and obviously Robert Kraft from the Patriots today. Tom finally threw his hands up and said, I'm going to stop looking for the hug and the commitment that I've been dying to get from this person in this team and this organization that I feel that I have, that I deserve. So while, and I know Robert Kraft has framed it today, at least in other conversations, I spoke to him and he did not frame it this way uh, with me, but did frame it as if this is Tom's decision. Well, as I wrote earlier, his decision to leave is the same as yours and my decision to get out of the car after it's parked in the driveway, put in park, and the engine's turned off. There's really nothing else you can do but get out. I mean, that's, that's it. The ride's over. Tom, I think, has had that made very clear to him in 2017 when he asked for an extension prior to the trade of Jimmy Garoppolo, certainly after the trade of Jimmy Garoppolo when no extension came, and instead there were just incentives of which Brady hit none. 
than prior to the 2019 season. Again, asking for an extension. Same thing as Drew Brees, being told that he'd probably get that, the two years, $25 million a year deal, and then instead getting nothing, to the point where Brady had to intimate that, you know what, I might be walking out of camp here, and then they gave him a raise. So those were the elements that led Tom Brady to decide to leave. So was it his decision? Or was it just, okay, why would I continue to wait? I mean, do the Patriots expect Tom Brady to legitimately open negotiations with them? Because that seems to be what they were intimating, that they thought he was supposed to tell them what he wanted when he was the free agent. So I I don't see that as being Tom Brady's decision. I see that as him reading the writing on the wall and saying, okay, well, I'm going to head out now. And they go, okay, we're going to see you. We loved this. This was great. Yes, it was. Well, I guess forever. Now, Tom, I mean, just to, just to, I guess to throw in uh, perspective from my, my own, you know, universe, um, you know, I, when I started at ESPN, I, I thought I'd be there forever. Literally. It was my uh, identity. It was the, the, the people yep. who I was, I, I literally, I, I came from the Northern California Screw it. I'll, I'll complete the, the the analogy. Graduated from Michigan, was working yep. in Northern California at a small market station in Redding, California. I was like pick 199, you know, like they, yep. they ESPN found me there and and gave me a platform and gave me a career and gave me a, an opportunity in which I tried to be as great as I possibly could. I was a competitive son of a bitch. I still am right now. I just said those words, you know, so um, but I parted ways because circumstances were created by management that left me no choice in my mind but to leave, you know? And I think that's what you're saying right now. Yeah. So, Rich, did you decide to leave? Yes. But did you decide to leave after it was made clear to you that you weren't part of the long-term solution? Perhaps. I don't know what your situation was. Right. I think that Tom has felt as if, look, I'm just, I'm human duct tape here. I got six Super Bowls. I throw for 505 against the Eagles. We win another one last year. And the next thing I know, I show up for camp. Not only do I have no raise, but I'm throwing a Gunnar Olszewski and Jacoby Myers. And I know by the end of the year, after we have an ass year of statistics, that they're going to look at me and say, we can't give you any more money. So what's he supposed to do? Go get an offer from Tampa Bay, run back to the Patriots, and say they're offering me $29 million a year for the next three years. What do you think? And they tell him, and Bill says, yeah, good for you. I mean, no. I try and make it as amicable as possible today. I think that I I really hope that happens, even though this um, industry doesn't really want to allow that to happen. But I I just hope it can be amicable. Philosophical differences. Well, I mean, Belichick's last line of his statement was exactly what you're you're saying. I guess he didn't say enough of where he's he said sometimes in life it takes some time to pass before truly appreciating something or someone, but that has not been the case with Tom. He's a special person and the greatest quarterback of all time. It sounds like you're and saying just, he, you didn't hear that enough or ever. Is that what you're I saying? Just, I just spoke to somebody very close to Tom who said, you know, if he said stuff like that more frequently, he wouldn't be leaving. Now, again, and, I, and I've said this a, a number of times to folks here and maybe on this show as well, there are folks around Tom who I think sometimes get emotional and might overstate, so I tamp down sometimes what their statements are. I don't know if that would be the case or not. If Bill told him every day with notes in his lunch that you're the greatest quarterback of all time, if it would be any different or not. But it is what he kind of thought was, is, hey, you know, we love Look, he might be the greatest quarterback of all time, but does Bill think he's going to be the greatest quarterback at $25 million a year with $13.5 million in dead money in 2020? I don't think so. All right, before I let you go then, Tom, uh, what's the plan B? Uh, as you uh, have pointed out, uh, the Patriots uh, clearly um, have seen the possibility of this happening. They sense it. They had to know it. Um, and Belichick is not a guy that isn't prepared uh, to the nth degree to his teeth. So what is the plan B here now? Is it is it going into the season with Jared Stidham, drafting somebody, signing somebody in free agency? What, what do you think for me? Or trading for somebody? There's Cam. There's Andy Dalton, potentially. I mean, wh- what's the plan B? My reflexive anticipation... What the hell? Reflexive into Just see what you expect, Tom. <laughs> what I expect to happen is Jared Stidham. 
That's Brie? what I expect to happen. Really? I mean, bring Andy Dalton in to do what? Put it, put your hands at 10-2 and two and keep you in between the white lines. I mean, he's not going to win your games. And if it's going to cost 10 12 $13 million to do it, and you add on Brady's money, too, that, that's two or three other good players you could probably get, have, or renegotiate. So go ahead with Jared Stidham. Now, I could be wrong. They might go do that. And when we talk about Bill's planning, it is generally exquisite, but that doesn't explain why there's no tight end from a roster for the last five years either and why no tight end succession plan was in place for Rob Gronkowski. We could see that coming, too. So I don't know where they're going to go. I do know they still have the best head coach in the NFL and the best culture for winning in the NFL. But I think it's going to be a, it's going to be a tough road, and they have a lot of work ahead of them in terms of rebuilding the entire roster. And in terms of that, Kyle Van Noy is now a, uh, a Dolphin. He hit it big. And uh, is Tooney there to stay? What, what, what do you think is happening right now? I that. believe that Joe Tooney was franchised to keep him off the market from teams who would otherwise try and grab him, i.e. the Jets. Keep him in New England. Make sure you work out a long-term deal. Drop his cap number. But I do not think that he was signed to the franchise tender in order to trade. Okay. And the poll question, ask it of Tom E. Curran of NBC Sports Boston. Christopher, go for it. Tommy, I'm so sad. Uh, who wins I know, the? I who, know. It sucks. How? Who wins the AFC East this year? Yeah, Buffalo for, Bills. You believe so, huh? Really, Tom? Really? Really? Yeah. Okay. I mean, Stephon Diggs, yeah. Dawson Knox. I know, right? John Brown. John Brown. Yeah, John I know. Ross. No, I know. And then you got the Singletary, and obviously Josh Allen in in year. Uh, three. Uh, this is this is th- this yeah, is Sean this McDermott could, can coach. This could be really happening right now. A changing of the guard in the AFC East. Is that really what's happening? You Maybe think? they should go after Brady. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you take care of yourself, Tom. <laughs> Thanks for the call. Appreciate it. You take so care, buddy. So this is it for us, I would guess. Huh? No, 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 uh, 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 no, no, no. Things change very I'll fast. You, I may be calling you literally tonight to say how about tomorrow or Thursday. Come on now. Let's be honest. All right, buddy. Take care I'll of yourself. You, you got That's Tom Kern. That's at NBC Sports Boston. Check him out on his podcast as well.